I'm not going to say anything because you're here. <laughs> Praise God. Let me get myself organized, which is very difficult. Pastor Mike is laughing already, but I'll try my level best. Okay. okay, before I start, let me say a short prayer. Father God, I commit myself in your hands today. As I am about to share your word, Father, I pray that you will take charge. You will take charge of my broken words, Father Lord. Father, I know that my words will not be eloquent, but Father, I just want your spirit to flow through me, Father. I surrender myself in your presence, Lord, and I want your will be to be done in this place. Let your children be blessed. Let your church be blessed. I ask and pray in the mighty, glorious, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So, I'm going to ask a lot of questions to the church today. So, you've got to be ready, church. Are you all ready? Are you sure you're all ready? Okay, let me tell you uh, a joke, what happened, that um, one day, uh, there were two ministers, so uh, one minister was from Church of uh, England and another minister was from Assemblies of God, not Pastor Mike, uh, another minister, and they were both uh, going to heaven, and uh, it happened to be that one of the minister's duty was on the door, and that was Church of England minister, and he said to the other minister, Praise God, brother, welcome. But he said, you cannot enter the heaven's gate before you answer me a question. He said, okay, why not? I am saved, I am blessed, I am a pastor, I need to enter into the heaven's gate. He said, no, you have to answer my question first. Only then I'll let you enter the heaven's gate. He said, okay. So what is the question? He said, okay. Who are the 12 disciples of Christ? Name them. He said, do you really want to ask me this question now? He said, okay, fine. He named the 12 disciples. And what happened next day? that the minister from Assemblies of God was on the guard duty. And it happened to be that the minister of Church of England wanted to enter the heaven's gate. He said, wait, 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 stop. You cannot enter the heaven's gate. You need to answer my question first. He said, okay, my son, ask me the question. What is your question? He said, how many people did Jesus feed? He said, 5,000. He said, name them. <laughs> so... No, I'm not going to ask you questions like that. I'll try my level best. I'm not going to ask you these questions. So it happened so that uh, 4th of March, I get a text message from Pastor Mike. And he says, you have been planning to preach on the church on 25th. Is it 25th today? 25th of April. And okay, I read the text message. That's okay. Praise God. We'll start preparing for it. Let's see what happens. And I just uh, did not pay any attention to the text message at that time. And then what happened next week, 11th of March, I was just uh, in my uh, home at that time. I was doing some paperwork and around 12, uh, 10 o'clock, I, I don't know what happened. I was just doing my work and I just started to um, look at my plants. And I love plants. I have a lot of plants in my house. If uh, you people have been to my house, you will see that I have uh, a lot of uh, nice indoor plants in my house and I love them. I really take care of them. My wife has just gone. He sometimes says you love your plants more than us. So uh, which is not true, but I do like my plants and I care for them. And I was just looking at my plants at the time and I saw that there were so many dry leaves in the plants. And I said, man, this is strange. I look after them so well and I don't know why there's so many dry leaves in the plants. So what I did, uh, I took some water and I just just went to them and I just start putting some water on them, which is quite unusual because I've got a day fix. Every Sunday afternoon I go and I water my plants. So th this is the picture of my plants in my house, you can see in the picture. I took it that day, that very moment, and I've got that in my record as well. So I was just thinking again and again, why are there so many dry leaves? It has never happened before that my plants had so many dry leaves. But I don't know what was happening in the background. That word of dry leaves just stuck with me at that point. I did not know what it meant, but it just stuck with me. 
and I was just looking at them and I've just taken some close uh, shots as well. You can see that there's some yellow leaves, some brown leaves in there. And I was just, uh, I was not quite happy. I said, okay, what's going on? Let me just uh, think about that. And you know, a week later, I was just sitting on my sofa and that word came to me again, dry leaves. And what I did, I just started Googling in my phone. I just opened the internet, opened the browser and I said, dry leaves, what is the cause of dry, dry leaves in the plants and everything? And as I was actually um, doing that, this is the picture of the dry leaves and also I brought some of the dry leaves. I kept them so that you can see what the dry leaves are. Can I just go to this first one? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to offer them to the Lord today. So these are the dry leaves and uh, this picture that you see, I haven't taken it from internet. I took them uh, on my dining table on top of my laptop. I scattered the dry leaves and I took a picture of them just to explain to you what the dry leaves were in my house. And as I was uh, sitting and I was uh, reading about, okay, what causes the dry leaves in an indoor plant? I was quite worried. I was concerned. I wanted to check that. And can we move to the next slide? And so there are three causes that I actually found. I went to this website. It calls, uh, it's called homeplantcare.com. It's a very good website. And it's got a very detailed uh, uh, sort of explanation of what can happen and why are the dry leaves caused in a plant. And the first thing that I actually looked at that was when there is not enough moisture, when you do not give enough water to the plant, the leaves become yellow and the leaf becomes dry. Okay, fair enough. I said, okay, that is something I can actually look at. The second thing that I actually looked at that point and that website, which is there, it was there when you give too much water. So sometimes, you know, when you give too much water to the soil, the soil is so wet that the roots are deprived of oxygen. And what happens? The plant do not get enough uh, oxygen and that's why it can cause the leaves to become dry or become yellow. And the third thing was not enough sunlight. Now mark this in red, but I'm going to discuss it later on at the end of my message. So I got this, I started to study this and I just uh, still was quite confused. Okay, look, you know what? This is a bit strange because it doesn't happen to me. I gave exact amount of water as I've been giving for the last three years. I follow my exact sat the same pattern and I don't know what it is, what has caused this to happen. But you know, at that time, just God started to speak to me and I just started to um, relate these things in a spiritual perspective. And when I started to think them in a spiritual perspective, I was still thinking, okay, what is it? What is dry leaves? What is, what does this represent? God, I do not know. I do not know. Just speak to me. It was so blurry. I knew there was something strong coming, but it was so blurry that I could not understand what is happening. I was just trying to use my own physical mind, my own ideas, just to see things, what is going around. But to be very honest, I was not getting a clear picture. I was not getting a clear answer. And I just prayed and I just left it at that. But I knew that something was coming, something was happening because God had started to speak. He started to speak with just one word a couple of weeks ago and that was just dry leaves. And I know this because I heard an edible voice of God and I knew that this was from God so I did not take that lightly. But I just left it, I forgot it, I was busy at that time but I did not leave it. So what happened, it, it just gradually, you know, this message, it has never happened to me in my life before. Sometimes, most of the times I've preached to the church, God has just given me a message at the very last moment, in the night time, just spoken to me. But this time, it was a totally different experience that I had because God spoke to me gradually, week by week, day by day, in different things, in worship. When I was in worship, God started to speak to me. When I was just like hearing the word of God, there were different things that just stuck by me. I was just, I was leading worship last week and I took a picture of a verse and Vicky said to me, you can just take a picture from here. Th this is how God started to speak to me. So it was quite different experience, something that I've never experienced before, that every week he was giving me something new, something that he wanted to build up. So the next week, I just decided to do, okay, God speak to me. What does it represent? What is it that you're showing me? You've just given me the word dry leaf, but tell me what it is. And you know, at that time I was standing in my kitchen in, um, I've got two doors in the kitchen and the, uh, the back door. And I was just looking at my plants and I was looking at my plants. 
And this is when God started to speak to me. I was standing, I was actually having my food, and God said, these leaves represent life. They represent you. They represent people in my church. They represent the human being. In a human being, I give so many blessings, so many blessings. There are so many green leaves there. But there are also some brown and yellow leaves. Can we go to the next slide? Yes, you got it. So I said, okay, God, finally you have given me something. Speak to me more, speak to me more. It's getting a little bit interesting. So speak to me. What do I need to do next? Where do I need to go next? Because I don't know. I'm still quite confused. I cannot connect the dots there. The, it's, it's a very big picture. I don't know exactly where you're taking me. And then I concentrated on the word dry. The word dry. What is dry? What does dry represent? Is it something good? Is it something nice? Is it something joyful? What does dry represent? You know, the one verse that came to my mind at that point was from Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. And this is what God said to his disciples. When an impure spirit comes out of a man, it goes through dry places. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through dry places. Before we proceed further, can everybody say that I have more green leaves in my life than dry leaves? Can I hear it louder? I have more green leaves in my life than dry leaves. Dry leaves. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when I was concentrating on that word, that was when an, pure, uh, when an impure spirit comes out of man, it goes through dry places. You know what? I just clicked. I said, dry, dry. It's not good. Dry is not a good place. And the second thing that came to me, it was the value of dry bones. And what does the value of dry bones represent? Does it represent joy? Does it represent happiness? No, it doesn't. The bones were dry because people were dead. They were fair in that place. You go to a graveyard in the night, you're not happy, you're not rejoicing, well, let's dance, I'm in a graveyard. You're scared. There's fear in you because there is death. Dry place is a place where the enemy has the upper hand. When an impure spirit, when you drive out a spirit from a human being, when you pray and you just uh, 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 drive out a spirit, where does the spirit go? To dry places. Because that is where the evil spirits have power. That is where they have dominion. Why? Because the place has got no life. It's death. And that is what the enemy become, uh, that is what the enemy brings. Death. The enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. That is why the dry places suits the enemy. That is where he can actually get hold of. A place where life cannot exist. So I just thinking, okay, what do dry leaves represent in our life? Jesus, you've just told me, okay, Holy Spirit, you've just told me that this picture that you're looking of all the leaves, it represents a human life. And in that picture, I also have some dry leaves. Now, what is that point? What do these dry leaves represent? These dry leaves represent the dry places that we have in our life. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, no one sitting here today can say that I never had any dry places in my life. Because these dry places represent the trials and tribulations that you have been through. They represent the temptations that the enemy bring in your life. They represent the stress, the difficult times that you go through. They represent the depressions. They represent the sin that is in your life. Or has been in your life. This is what it represents. Because the dry places are places of death. A place of sin. And you know the next thing that I was actually thinking and I was asking God. I said, God, okay, fine. Dry places. But how do... 
these dry places come in our life? How do these dry leaves come in our life? How does it happen? And then God gave me this verse, and that is from Book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 7 to 9. It's a prayer that Solomon prayed, and this is what he prayed. Can we have the verse up, please? And this is what Solomon said. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Two things I ask of you, Lord, yes? Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. What does it say? Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. You know, when I actually read, that, read this verse, I was shocked because at that point, I just read from a worldly website, why do plants die? Either you give them too much water or you don't give them enough water. Either you give them too much water or you don't give them enough water. And this is what Solomon, the most wise man on this earth says, two things I ask of you. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread so that I may not die. I may not have dry leaves in my life. Can we read the next verse as well, please? Yes. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? You know, brothers and sisters, when we have too much water in our life, we do not understand, but we say, when we have too many blessings in our life, sorry, let me uh, put it this way. We say, Who is the Lord? I have done all this hard work. I have done uh, all the hard work and uh, I have achieved all this success. I have worked hard. I woke up 5 o'clock in the morning. I went to work. I have worked hard all day. And after that, I have gained all this success. Who is God? He's done nothing. And this is one of the main things that we will hear on our streets when we go on evangelism. That people do not believe in God because they live in a land of blessings. They have not seen poverty. They are blessed. They have all the luxuries of life. And what happens? They forget God. They forget God. They just say, they disown Him and say, all of this we have done by our own will. God has done nothing. And what happens? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. You know, another reason of the leaves to dry is when they have less moisture, when they do not have enough water, when they do not have their needs met. What do human beings start to do? They start to complain. They start to moan. They start to take roots which are not righteous. Rather than trusting the Lord, they look at the human being and that is where they lose. That is where they disgrace the name of God because rather than looking at the name of God, they start looking at human hands. They start looking at things of this world. They start doing things which are not righteous and they disown the name of the Lord. I was so blessed and so touched by that verse because this is also what Jesus Christ taught his disciples. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Give us today our daily bread. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. This is what Jesus taught. This is what you need. This is what I need today. I ask God this one thing, that God only give me the message that you will speak to me as well. I do not want to be standing in that place just preaching to your church, just preaching to your children. I want to be preaching this word to myself, to my own life. I need to know what I need to correct in my life. I need to look at the dry places in my life as well. I'm not here standing as a dictator and telling, oh, by the way, all of you are sinners. You have dry places in your life. And I'm the only holy one standing here, the holy man of God. I'm not. I'm preaching to myself today as well. Because this is something God is speaking to me as well in my life. I, I want to deal with the dry leaves, the dry places. 
of my life. Because what happens if there are dry places in my life, I am giving a free pass to the enemy, to the devil, to the impure spirits that they can go by, they can pass by the dry places in my life. Because this is what the word of God says. When an impure spirit leaves a body, it goes to the dry places. When an impure spirit would leave my body, it would look for dry places in your life. It's not going to go out and on the road and wander on the road. It's going to move around among us. Just finding, okay, which man here has got a dry place in his life and I will take refuge in there because there's a free pass for me to go there. It is so important, so imperative, brothers and sisters. We should not take, do not take this word lightly. Do not take this word lightly. Because today, God is here to deal with the dry places in your life. Can we all say, say that together? Today, God is here to deal with the dry places in my life. Today, God is here to deal with the dry places in your life. Say that to your neighbors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now the question is, and I was reading on the website, how do we deal with the dry leaves? What to do? What is the best thing to do? Is Nita here? He's not here. He's in Sunday school. He also loves plants and he knows, uh, he all, all often tells me, and this is something that she, she told me about uh, three, four years ago. And he said, you know what, when um, a leaf turns yellow in your plants, just take them off because it takes the good nutrients in your plant. And I just said, oh, he's just joking. He doesn't know. I'm more experienced in plants, so I know these things. But I just did the research and I found out that he was true and I was wrong. He was very true in that. So what is the things? And I was, when I was reading in uh, this website, it said that when you have dry leaves in your plants, cut them as soon as possible. Because what happens? The first thing, it frees up the nutri nutrients to encourage new growth. Now, what do the dry leaves do? They stick to your plant and they keep on leaching the good nutrients from the plants, just taking them in. That's the first thing they do. They do not allow the nutrients to pass through so that the plants can grow. They just uh, sort of uh, make a barrier. They form a barrier that the uh, nutrients, good nutrients from the plants will not flow and the plants cannot grow. So they stop your growth. And this is what happens. You know, the dry places in our life, when there is sin in our life, it just causes a blockage, a barrier. It does not allow you to go further. It does not allow you to grow. In fact, you just... Sometimes they, dry places come in many different forms, you know. It comes in forms of stress, it comes in forms of depression, it comes in forms of temptation, it comes in form of sin, so many different things that it can come in form, it can come in the form of jealousy, it can come in the form of hatred, it can come in the form of pride. And let me tell you this one thing, not all the spiritual people are also are exempt from it, that they would not have the dry places. There could be spiritual pride that can take over in your life and that would actually become a dry leaf. It includes me, includes everyone. Our pastor sitting here, everyone who is a leader in the church, it includes all of you. We all are vulnerable. But the only way we can be saved is by the blood of Jesus. That is the only solution. So what does a dry leaf do? It stops all the nutrients that they can be used better elsewhere. So one of the first things that you should do, as soon as sin enters your life, we need to get rid of it. As soon as a bad thought enters your life, your mind, you need to get rid of it. You need to repent. You need to ask forgiveness. You need to deal with the situation there and then. You cannot say, okay, fine, it has happened. I will just pray and then I'll keep on doing it. If you keep on doing that sin, you are letting that sin stick in your life and drain out all the good nutrients. All the good things that you're doing are all going to waste because of that one thing that you're not dealing with in your life. So do not say that I can have one bad thing in my life and I will do all the rest of the good things and I'll be okay. Because I tell you one thing, heaven does not work like that. That could be a Muslim theology that your good deeds and your sins are going to be weighed and if your good deeds are more, you're going to go to heaven and if your sins are less, then you will go to heaven. But it doesn't work in heaven. 
it doesn't work in the kingdom of God. Our God is a pure and holy God. If there is one thing in your life which is a stumbling block, it's better for you to cut it off Amen. than not enter into heaven. Because this is what the word of God says. Let us read. I'm going to read some verses. Sorry, I don't think I had these verses. They just came to me as we were worshipping. So I'm going to see if we can read through these verses. If you have, that would be amazing. But if you don't, that's fine. Okay. So this is from Mark chapter 9, verse 43. It says, If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into hell. How strong words are these? There is power in these words. It is strong and harsh words. How difficult it is for you to just cut your one hand. How difficult it is for you to cut your one leg. How difficult it is for you to take your eye out. Brothers and sisters, this is not an easy thing to do. There are certain things in your life that you would love. You'd really love to do something. But it is not bringing glory to God. In fact, it is becoming a dry place in your life. You need to cut it off. Some people are stuck in bad things. They're stuck with adultery. They have different things that just become a part of their life and it's not easy for them to let go of those things. They keep on coming to church, they give their tithes, they give their offerings, they do every single thing. But there are, it is difficult for them to let go of that one thing in their life which they know themselves, it is not right, but they just think in their heart that, okay, fine, I do all the other good things, but this one thing will not be a stumbling block for me. But brothers and sisters, I tell you this one thing, and I'm saying that to you very, very clearly, that one thing that you are thinking as a minor thing will become a major thing for you to enter into the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God does not work in a way where you will carry the sin with you there. You cannot have the sin with you. You need to let go of that part of your life. And if you do not, Sorry to say, you will not be able to enter heaven. These are harsh words, but I have to speak to you by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You need to set your priorities right. You need to have the right attitude for God. You know, I was just... Uh, Thinking about this thing as well, how do dry leaves come? How do dry leaves come in your life? And you know, there was one thing that Pastor Jack was sharing earlier in the sermon. He was saying, you know, when we forget to follow the calling of God. God has a calling for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you who is sitting here in His presence is very, very special. And each and every one of you has got a calling over His life. None of you can say that God only chose me, that I will just come to church on a Sunday and then I will get busy with my regular works and I will forget about God for the rest of the six days. But only Sunday I will come to church and I will be forgiven. Please, this is a misconception that you are living in. God has called you all for a special purpose. You have been called from different nations. You've been called in this place. You're sitting in this, in this place at this very moment of time, listening to this word. There is a purpose of God behind that. And you know what happens when we forget our calling, when God has called us to do a certain thing, and then we try to use our human mind and we say, no, you know what? This calling, I don't think it's for me anymore. I'm going to leave this calling. I'm going to go into something else. You leave a void. And you know what happens? 
that void becomes a dry place in your life. It's empty, it's hollow, it's dry, and that dry place that allows the enemy to enter and overtake, and then start doing his will. You know, a lot of times, Pastor Mike was sharing that, that we give importance to our studies, we give importance to our jobs, more than importance to our church. All of these other things are secondary. For the word of God says, seek first his kingdom and everything else shall follow. When we look at the things of this earth first, when we forget our calling, when we forget that we have importance to church, what it does, it creates a void in our life. And if that void, that dry place is not dealt with, you know what the next step happens? That it starts to spread. You know, I noticed in my plants this one thing, that there was one dead leaf, I didn't took it away, I left it there, it causes the next leaf to become dry. And then it causes the third leaf to become dry, and then the fourth leaf to become dry. And that's the exact same thing that I actually looked in the uh, Google, I researched and I said, to prevent a spread of disease, you need to take that leaf out. So important that you need to deal with that one sin that you recognize in your life rather than leaving it and said, oh, don't worry, it's okay, it's just a minor sin. God is not going to be worried about that. You need to deal with that right away because that gives opportunity to another sin to enter in your life. Now, Adam, he had a bit of pride in him. He had a bit of selfishness. He wanted to become like God. He allowed that to enter. What happened? That led him to do disobedience. What happened? That disobedience led him to lie to God. One sin after the other. Cain was jealous of his brother. He could have dealt with that jealousy there and then. He could have said, okay, God, I ask your forgiveness. This time my sacrifice has not been accepted. I will offer a better sacrifice next time and it will be accepted to you. You're a God. There is no competition. You can accept my sacrifice and you will accept Abel's sacrifice. So I'm happy with that. Rather than that, he was jealous. And he allowed jealous to enter his life as a dry place. And that allowed him to do murder, to commit murder. One sin after the other. Saul, the first ever king of Israel, a great king. What an honor to be the king of God's chosen nation. A handsome, tall fellow. Everyone loved him. He was the first king of Israel. He had all the luxuries, all the facilities given to him. What he did? He allowed his pride to enter in his heart that he can do things by his own will. That pride allowed fear to enter him so that he was looking after the voice of men. He was looking after what would men say. That fear led him to be disobedient, offer, offer the sacrifice which he should have not done. That led for him to be afflicted by an evil spirit a man chosen by God, a prophet of God, a prophet of God. You know, Saul was a prophet of God. He used to prophesy. God chose him as a king, God's chosen person, a prophet, was afflicted by an evil spirit. That led him to become jealous of David. That led him to plot in his head to murder David. One sin after the other, one sin after the other. And that is what happens in your life if you do not deal with that sin there and then. If there is something that comes in your life which is not from God, just deal with it right away. Because anything, let me, tell, let me make it very, very clear, right? Let me give you a right definition of sin. Anything that is not in your life from God is sin. Anything that is not from God is a dry leaf in your life. Anything that is not from God is a dry place in your life. And you know what the third thing I actually read there was that dry leaves, they're not attractive, are they? Does any one of you like dry leaves to leave them on their live plants? You want to take them out. They're very unattractive, very unattractive. And that was the only reason I used to take my dry leaves out. I didn't used to take them because I knew that they're causing problem to my leaves because they looked ugly. So I used to take them off anyway. But I just found out that Sunita was right. I was not right. They to drain a lot of energy from the plants. 
So when they ruin the appearance of our life, how can we keep the sin tagging along? All of us have been called to be living sacrifice in the presence of God. We are his representative on earth. We are called Christians because we follow him. Christianity is not a religion. We are not bound by religion. We are called Christians because we follow him. And anybody who is sitting here does not follow Christ, trust me, guys, you are not Christians. You just got a title associated with yourself. Christians, you are not Christians because you do not follow Christ. It's not a religion. We do not live in religion. But we believe in a living God. And we are Christians because we follow him. We follow him. I had some pictures just to show you of uh, the dry leaves and the appearance where uh, there was dry leaves. And you can see that they look ugly and disgusting. They look really ugly. They look empty. Look at the uh, sides where it, there are like dry leaves and stuff. They, they look really empty, total empty. God does not want his children to look like that. If we have empty lives, how could we be living examples of Christ in this world? How can we be the light in this world if we do not have the light in us? We need to deal with our dry places. And you know, I was just checking and I did this experiment and this started about three, uh, uh, about three months ago that th this came to my mind that I need to take these dry leaves off the thing. And I just checked just today this morning from the places where I took the dry leaves out, there were more healthy leaves coming out. Because only God has the power to replace dead leaves with healthy leaves. So there's the ne next example. I just uh, marked them. I was so surprised. I just took this picture this morning. Next slide, please. If you can clearly see, they, these are some markings that I've just circled. <clears throat> some of them are like quite small, the top one. But these are the places where I took out the dry leaves from. And those are the places where new leaves are coming up. And they're quite healthy, quite nice. New branches are coming out. You know, when you give your sins in the presence of Lord, when you surrender your sins in the presence of Lord, when you surrender your dry places in the presence of your Lord, when you ask for his forgiveness, that Father God, forgive me, for I was called for something special, but I did not follow your command. He has the power to restore. Only he has the power to restore you. He has the power to bless you. And you know, even the dry leaves, which we think as dry, and I was just studying about what about dry leaves, what more can be done with the dry leaves, those dry leaves, if you surrender into the hand of Jesus, you know what he can do? He can make them into a powerful compass for your life. Something that will bring nutrition. But we need to get rid of them. We need to let those dry leaves be buried in the earth so that they can become compass. If I can actually read from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. So it says there, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his bones you have been healed. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. Look at this. You know, when you have dry leaves, when you bury them, they become compass. And you know, I was just doing the research. The nutrition that those dry leaves give are even better than the chemical uh, fertilizers. It's so good. It brings nutrition. It brings growth to the plant. It uh, uh, creates uh, some sort of like uh, mechanism where the plant does not get sick. It is a healthy plant. There are no insects that can harm the plant. So it does so many special things, so many nice things. I was surprised. But only if you surrender those dry leaves and let them be buried in the ground. Only if you surrender your sins, let them be buried with Christ on his cross. Let them go into the grave only then you can have life and life in abundance for he died for our sins he took our sins in him and he turned the evil into good only he has the power to turn evil into good brothers and sisters I'm just 
not speaking these words in the air. I am speaking these words to your life. If there are things in your life that you have not surrendered, today is the time, it's the opportunity, it's the word that is not from me because I did not understand what God wanted me to speak today. But he has led me to share this with you. You need to let go of your dry leaves because today is the time for a miracle in your life. Things that cannot happen can only happen by his grace. And you know, as we go further, there are a few slides, just a couple of more slides. There's one slide that I just added in the church right now. And that slide I had no intention to add, but I added that slide and I was just uh, sitting here and something that Pastor Jackie spoke to me and I was, God, how do you operate? You operate in such miraculous ways, which is beyond our comprehension. You know what your children want, you know what your children need, and you give it to them. Because you have this power. I did not speak with Pastor Jackie what I was going to share today. He did not know. I did not know what was going to be shared today. I did not know what Pastor Mike was going to preach. But all of these things are coming to you together in perfect harmony. I did not know what worship songs will be sung today. But all of them are coming in perfect harmony for the glory of God. You know, there is one point that I left. That what causes the plants to die? What causes the plants to die? Can we go to this slide number number four? Slide number four. You know, at this point, not enough sunlight, and I've marked that in red. Not enough sunlight. If you put a plant in a dark place, very dark place, there's not enough sunlight, the plant will die. It will die. And you know when Moses told Joshua how to bless the children of Israel, this is what he said to him. Pastor Mike, are you going to read that verse for me? May the Lord bless you. Okay, let's look at slide 14. So it's from book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 to 26. And the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you and make you. His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And what is Lord's face? It's brighter than the thousand suns. Let me tell you this. Lord's face is brighter than the thousand suns. And that is how Moses asked Aaron to bless them. Because from the face of God is our blessing. You know, I have these pictures of a couple of my leaves. In my home, if you have been, there are certain places where the plants get a lot of light and there are certain places where plants do not get enough light. And I took a picture of these two leaves. These two leaves are four to five times bigger than the leaves that are in the place where they do not get enough sunlight. And I said, this is not coincidence. This is God. This is God telling you that if God's light, His face will shine upon your life, you will be prosperous. You will be prosperous like everyone will see that these are God chosen people who are after his own heart. The light of God lives in them. For he was the way, he was the truth and he was the light. And we follow him. It was so touching for me. I could not believe that God, you're showing me all these things step by step, step by step. Every single thing in a step that plants which they do not have enough light they're very tiny small leaves but the place where there is good sunlight and I saw that yesterday that there is good sunlight coming from that place and the leaves are big huge brothers and sisters if you want God to work in your life you need to surrender you need to surrender to him 
you need to let go of your dry places. You need to be placed in the right position. You know, Pastor Jackie shared this one thing. We need to be in the right position, in the right place where God wants us to be. We cannot just have things of our own choosing, things that we like best, things that are comfortable for us. We need to be planted in that right place. We need to have the right amount of sunlight to our lives so that we are able to grow. We are able to become nice, strong, healthy plants which, we, which can represent the blessings of God through our lives so that the world will see that these are God's children after his own heart. They follow God. There is something different in their life. That is why the blessings follow them. That is why the enemy has got no hold over their life. You know, there was another funny thing. Uh, Brother uh, Vicky is gone from here. But Brother Asher is here. So we go to worship practice in this Pulse studio uh, every other week. This week we are going to go as well. And about six weeks ago, there was this plant there which was sitting outside. And that guy left that indoor plant, a bonsai tree, in the cold for the last four months. And it was completely gone, it was dead. And I used to hate it. I said, look back, what is he doing? He's just left this plant outside and it's like completely dead and it's not going to work. And one day I was going to pick that plant and I was going to take that. And Vicky said, oh man, don't do that. What are you doing? You're just stealing somebody's plant. Just leave it there. Let it die. What is it? It's only 40, 50 pounds worth of plant. I said, it's not the thing. It's just out in the cold. It has been snowing. It's been a rough weather. It's just in the water, rain. It should not be like that. It's just soaking wet. It's dead plant. I just want to take it in so I can actually um, take care of it and maybe bring life to it. And uh, he just told me off. And then next, after two weeks, when I went there as well, I saw the plant same there and it was completely dry, completely dead. And uh, I saw... I met with the studio guy and he said, you know what, I feel so sorry for this plant. It's there here sitting outside and it's such a nice plant, but it's dead. And the, the, the owner just came out and we just spoke with him. I said, look, can I take this plant? And I just asked Brother Asher to help me and we took that plant home. Now, I took care of that plant for about four, five weeks and uh, uh, about five weeks. And it was not going anywhere. And I read that this plant was completely dead. There is nothing else that can happen to it. I uh, cut one of the stems and I saw that it was <coughs> completely dry. There was no, nothing that can be done. And I just read, Googled and everything and did all the research on the plant. How can we bring that plant to life? Because it was a good plant and I felt sorry for it. And when I read it couldn't be brought to life, you know what I did? Took the plant, left it outside the house just to throw it in the bin. And after two days, I don't know what happened to me. And I was just preparing myself and I said, God has given us authority to command and bring life. And I am going to pray over this plant. And you know, I just want to show this last picture. This was not what I had any intentions. And I, this was a miracle that happened. And I just wanted to share it with you. This is the plant. You can see the stems are totally dry. Even the roots were dry. The plant came out totally. You can see all that dry plant. And I prayed over that plant about five days ago. And day before yesterday, Hanouk knows that they were sitting there doing some account works on Thursday. And I said, I just see some green leaves coming through that plant. And I tell you, it's not something to tell, oh, my prayers worked and all of this. This is just to show you, just to tell you, brother and sister, that our God is a God of miracles. He's there to do a miracle for you. Pastor Jackie, this is what you shared with me. This is what God is here to do in your life today. I did not add this. I just added these two slides while I was sitting back in the back at the church. Because God was speaking to me through the worship time. Because he is here to do something special in your life today. He is here to bring life to the dead roots that have been in your life for many years. The things that the world can say that they will never recover. But only by the power of Jesus Christ, by his blood, they can be brought to life. Yes. Today is the day I'm speaking to you in spirit. Open yourself up. Let God search your heart. Let him see the dry leaves in your life and get rid of them for you. If you cannot get rid of them, if you're struggling, just surrender to him today. Let him bring life to the places where you are not able to reach.
or he has the power to reach deep down yeah. and do something miraculous in your life today. Hallelujah. Pastor Jackie, I'd like to invite you, if you have something to share, please share, because I feel like God is putting something in your heart today to share with us. Where's the mic, please? Just slant over to say to Haroon, I don't know why I said it to him, just before he came to preach that um, while Stephen was um, convening and a few people came forward, I felt God say to me that he wanted to give people miracles that they had been longing for. But it just wasn't clicking into, into place, so I held it back and I just felt, my, and I just told Haroon, I don't know why I told Haroon. And I said to him, maybe, don't worry about what I said, maybe it's for another week. But no, God today wants to give people miracles that they have been waiting for and needing. But I believe the reason God hasn't released those miracles to you is because the order needs to be correct. It has to be, seek first the kingdom. And then all these things will be added unto you because miracles for miracles sake, needs we have in our lives aren't what we really need. And as Sarah mentioned, you know, you can go too far one way, too far the other way. But God wants us balance and God wants us to keep our eyes on him and what's really important is living with him and having him first and having these issues in our lives dealt with. And as we seek first the kingdom, all these things will be added unto us. The miracles will be added. The miracles aren't actually the things often that we need. What we need is our lives right with God and our lives moving with God and our lives being in position aligned with what God's will is. And then I, be, I promise you that the, the, the miracles you've been waiting for and asking God for will be an addition. But as we get the, the order right, I hope it makes sense. And we have God first and, and we're walking in the way that he's called us to walk, dealing with things that are holding us back in our lives, creating these dry leaves. As we deal with those things, the miracles, the things that you need, because I believe some people have dire needs today, I promise you God will meet those needs. Praise God. Hallelujah.